Hi guys. Now let's just hope all my technology works today. So today we're talking about combating um, isolation in family daycare. There was a recent, um, I suppose, forum around the changes to the early years learning framework. And this has happened many times with changes to legislation and those sorts of things. And often we hear back from family daycare educators said so that saying that they weren't aware of the changes or they weren't informed or they just sort of didn't know when they feel disconnected and they feel um, probably um, less important than centre-based services. We often get that kind of feedback around our sector. So today I'm going to talk about what are some of the strategies that you can do in your family daycare as a family daycare educator and what providers can assist you with also in order to alleviate or minimise some of those feelings. Because you do work by yourself predominantly or a lot of the time, um, these feelings are real for family daycare educators, very different to our centre-based counterparts and what that means for them because they're always working with somebody. They may or may not like them or get along, whatever else, but they're still working with somebody. They're exposed to those collegial conversations. They're exposed to different practices. So there's a range of differences as to why you guys in family daycare can often feel this disconnect with the sector. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'll tell you just a little bit about me. So I'm a governance and early, um, I'm a governance and leadership advisor. I've been in the sector for over 35 years. I hold early childhood qualifications, um, business qualifications and human services qualifications. I've specialised in governance and leadership for the past 16 years and the past six years almost, I specialise in family daycare. So the purpose of the YouTube channel is to make sure that educators have access to the information from a governance advisor, that this is free information for educators, um, just so that you can keep your skills up to date and access free information because we do know that um, uh, uh, there are some training gaps for many family daycare educators. Of course, not all, but many. I will take this opportunity to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land. And I come from you today from the Wurundjeri country. So I would like to just acknowledge my respect to the elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that the land on which we all come from, we work for the betterment of all children. So I would like to say that. Isolation. So isolation is real. You can have feelings of loneliness. You can get stagnant in practices. So if you're not, um, if you're not exposed to, to new practices, new concepts, new conversations, then sometimes what you did 10 years ago, you're still currently doing now, and that may be outdated. Um, I see in some of the forums with family daycare that time out is still a practice and that's actually not considered best practice any longer. So how are you updating your skills? How are you staying informed? How do you know what is considered best practice? All those sorts of things. And the other thing with being uh, feelings of isolation is it can actually contribute to your stress because you're like, I'm just doing this by myself. Why am I just doing this by myself? Nobody's helping me. So you can have this layer of stress that we all have in our workplaces anyway, but it can be, um, I suppose, exacerbated by working alone. Um, and you often, and a lot of new parents will also say this, but family daycare educators will say this probably even more than new parents will, I just want to have an adult conversation. I've been with children all day. I just want to have an adult conversation. I want to stop hearing that, you know, wheels on the bus song going round and round, you know, 20,000 times every day. I, you know, the wiggles, I'm over the wiggles today. I just want an adult conversation. So we can see these, we, we see these feelings of discontent, we see these feelings of loneliness, we see these feelings of um, disgruntledness even. So today, as I said, we are going to talk about some of the things that you can do. Now, one of the things that I do want to say to you all the time is, now I work for two of our three peak bodies and one of the things that we work on all the time in those peak bodies is engaging family daycare educators. There are a number of barriers to that. Like firstly, we as peak bodies um, that are registered with CEQA and with CCS, we can access those databases, but they are 
the approved provider or the service provider, we don't have access to approach you as a peak body. We don't have the access to approach you as an educator directly. So we don't have your email address so that you know what training is coming up, you know what changes are coming up, you know what policies need to be changed, you know what practices need to be changed. So you, But just know that you're not alone. Those peak bodies, you can reach out to the peak bodies at any given time. You can reach out to me at any given time. Um, so you're not alone. And family daycare is, in fact, probably more valued from a sector perspective than you may realise. And um, sitting up at those peak bodies where I sit quite frequently, I can absolutely tell you that family daycare is always in the forefront of our minds about how we can engage and support family daycare. So you are definitely not alone. That one much I can promise you. So today, we see these are some of the strategies that I give to everybody just to make sure they stay um, informed and connected and aware, I suppose, of best practice. So make sure you have some professional newsletter subscriptions. The Department of Education um, have newsletters. The Department of Education, Skills and Employment have regular newsletters. I have regular newsletters. Uh, Early Childhood Australia have regular newsletters. So find the subscription that works for you if you've got a particular educational theory, a program theory. You might be a Montessori program. You might be a Steiner program. I'm sure there are forums that you would be able to sign up for those so that you get an understanding of what's what's changing, what's happening, what the current conversations are, what the current challenges are. So those newsletter subscriptions are really important. And you know what? You don't have to read the whole thing or you don't have to subscribe to a million. Just subscribe to a couple that are of interest to you. Have a quick little read while you have a coffee once or twice a week and that will help you stay informed. Network if you can network. Now, I know many service providers offer you as educators networking opportunities. So make sure you do take those opportunities to network and have those adult conversations, have those professional conversations because we don't want people being, we don't want family daycare educators getting to, into that home rut where they do really feel alone and then, then we end up with that disconnect and that dissatisfaction. So networking is a way that you can really, um, I suppose, um, enhance your skills or invigorate your skills or invigorate your knowledge. So make sure you're taking opportunities of networking. And if your service provider doesn't provide any opportunities, I'm sure that there are many educators you can, there's many educators on Facebook even that you can connect with and build that network that you can just pop your questions in there and, and there's other people on the other side that you can engage with. Professional development. Now, I speak in my budget and my costings video, so you might want to check that one out if you haven't already, about budgeting for professional development or budgeting for a conference even. Like I really promote that everybody goes to a conference. I think conferences are really good for our professional soul. Um, but make sure you can attend some professional development. If your budget is tight around professional development, there is actually a number of free resources that you can access, the JPS YouTube channel being one, ECA has some um, webinars that you can do, and I'm pretty sure that Early Childhood Australia, ECA, I'm pretty sure that they have a number of free ones or low-cost ones. Um, if you check out my website, I've got some really low cost uh, webinars that you can watch on your own time. You can watch it in your pajamas on your couch kind of thing. So these are some of the strategies that we're, we're all as a sector putting in place for you guys so that you can access professional development and current information. Um, now, one of the other things is join a supported play group. Many service providers have this already, but if they don't, you can just have a bit of a Google around and see what's in your area or your region and what you can tap into with the children that are in your care. And sometimes that might be intimidating for some people. You might go, oh, you know, I'm meeting new people. I need to get out and I need to go there and I need to do this. But trust me, if you go to a supported play group, the children are often engaged in the play group because it is facilitated and you can watch and learn from that facilitator you can have conversations with other educators you know this is what I'm dealing with now that yes I get that I'm dealing with that too and we do know that post-COVID that there are children are presenting with behaviours um, that that 
are a direct correlation to being in isolation, missing out on some of those developmental stages. So we do know that that is a reality to anybody working with children at this point. So there's some of the things that you can do to combat those feelings and to, to get involved. So as I've said, staying informed, read. And you don't have to sit and read like you're doing your master's degree or anything, but read your newsletters. There's um, a website called The Sector and they have a range of um, articles um, that it's online. They have a range of articles that you can just have a read. Oh, you know, this happened in this centre, this centre's doing this. Um, Community Child Care Australia, they have Northern Community Child Care Association, they have... Um, free magazines that you can subscribe to. They, yeah, there's a whole range of information out there that will help build your professional knowledge, build your skills, I suppose, and just have an understanding of what's going on in the sector because the sector does shift and change. And, you know, we used to often use that terminology, the land, the landscape is shifting, and it does. And, you know, we are dealing with a workforce shortage at this point. We are dealing with children presenting with challenging behaviours post-COVID. We are dealing with parents that are coming out of um, COVID and, like many of us, are struggling financially to regain what, what has been lost. So there are differences in working with our current society than it was two years ago. And some of these articles, magazines and resources have been tailored to, to that to help you work with those families and children and get the best out of the education and care service that you're providing. So when it comes to networking, take that opportunity. And I know that um, you often work really long hours and you may work six days even. Some of you even work seven days. So what does that look like for you? Can it be a network every maybe Wednesday evening at your local community hall? Would, you know, would, would that help? Would it help that you're online every, you know, day or so just to see what's going on and what other educators are experiencing and what some of their strategies are and how they're um, helping families or assisting families or looking after their own well-being? What are some of those type of things that they're doing? Um, Free PDs. Now, I've already covered that a little bit, free PDs, but I did want to also highlight that depending on your municipality, each municipality does have a, a children's services department. They all might use different terminology and different language, but they you should be able to connect with your local government and they would have some child activities, some child safe standard practices, some um, some conferences, some, there is a range of things that local government have that you can tap into. So make sure you check those out and you see what's going on. Conferences, as I've mentioned, are a wonderful thing. And conferences, if you can budget for a conference, now with family daycare, conferences can be every second or third year even. So if you can budget for that, depending on where they are, now it is an expense, I get that, but I do talk about how you can achieve this expense um, in my costings video. So it might be that you apportion X amount of money per week. So that might mean that you're not going to the next one, but you may be going to the next one after that. Have a separate account for your PD or your conference attendance, those sorts of things. Because if you do need to go interstate for a conference, it can be an expense of, say, $3,000. So, But conferences are, it's like a vitamin injection. It really does, it really does um, provide you with so much information and it gives a lot of inspiration. A good conference will really inspire. So that's what we're going for. Um, with the supported play groups, many of those have to be registered with um, a play group agency. So just double check with your approved provider or your service provider what that looks like in your local area. If your service provider can't help you, again, go back to your local government. They would have some ideas around or they would know where to contact or who to speak to about supported play groups in your area. And play groups can go, you, you know, you might end up going every I don't know, every Tuesday of the week or you may end up going every, you know, third Tuesday of the month or something like that. So make sure you tap into that. That's a very good resource for you to be um, attached, uh, uh, involved in. That's the word I was after. 
Okay, so there's many ways that you can stay in touch here just with me alone. So I've got the, the JPS Family Daycare Group and that's for educators and service providers. Um, and I pop in there once every now and then and just make sure that everybody's okay and questions are asked and those sorts of things. So if you do need anything asked at all, whether that's from your program to managing or dealing with parents or if you want to develop your own policies, you would, whatever that is, you can pop that in there. And, um, and if I don't know, I can definitely get you on the right path to what that is. There's many YouTube videos here now. Those of you that know me, I am a no fluff kind of person. So it is really that they are straightforward and direct. Of course, they're not um, uh, they're, they're not really, you know, thorough or unpacked or deep down. Um, that's what the webinars on the website will be that would unpack that more. But the YouTube channel is really just to give you a snippet and an insight into certain topics or particular issues. So jump in, have a little look around. Um, there is, if you are new as a, as a new family daycare educator, there is a series that um, I can't remember what they're called. They're called the induction series, which is 20 videos in total. I think an equivalent, uh, it's the equivalent of maybe three hours worth of induction. And that is really around implementing the legislation, making sure that you're safe, making sure that children are safe. So that, that series covers off quite a lot. So double, so check that out. Um, I might pop the link to that playlist in, in here for you so you know. Um, subscribe to the YouTube, the YouTube channel because that really the more subscribers we have to this channel, um, then we, we, can make the, we can continue to keep this a free resource for family daycare educators. So please make sure that you subscribe. Um, and oh, the business plan template, I will pop here because I do think that it is a vital tool for family daycare educators. So if you want to access the free business, uh, the free template, the cost, the budget template, I will also pop the limp, limp, link in here for you too. So thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will be in touch real soon. Take it easy. You have a great weekend. See ya. Bye.